my name is Zoe Clark. I'm an osteopath and I have AS as well. I joined the NAS team during the COVID-19 outbreak to help with helpline calls and also to provide these sessions to give you lots of advice and support on helping to manage your acts far at home. So please do drop a comment in the comment box, let me know that you're watching. As always, the video will remain on the page afterwards so you can catch up later. But if you'd like to pop a question in the comment box and I'll come back at the end of the session and answer all your questions live. So today the topic is all about driving. And originally when we scheduled this, um, obviously lots of us were driving a lot more. Now it's looking like we're gonna be driving a bit less, but I thought driving is always a good topic to cover. And as I said, because the video will remain on the page and we'll pop all the information on our website, it's something you can come back to at a later date if you're going on a longer journey or anything like that. So hopefully a few people are watching and you can pop any comments in there. So I'll get started with chatting through my advice and then I'll come on to your questions at the end. So firstly, one of the biggest things people ask me about in terms of driving with any back problem, but especially with Axel SPA, is asking how on earth you can get out of in, in and out of a car comfortably when you have a bad back or you have pain or you have stiffness. So I thought I would show you the best technique that you can use and give you a couple of hints so that hopefully we can make it a bit more comfortable. So for this, you're gonna to have to use your imagination a little bit. I was intending to do the video outside with my car so I could show you everything um, properly, but good old Great British weather has let me down a little bit today. Uh, it's quite cloudy and quite drizzly in Norfolk today. So I'll pop the chair like so. So you've got to imagine that this is my car. This is the front seat. And I'm going to show you how you can get in and get out comfortably. So with this, you want to open the car door nice and wide so that you've got plenty of room to get in and out. And then you want to come up to the seat and stand so you're, you're having your back to the car. And then reach round and pop your hand on the back of the seat or onto the door frame and then onto either the door frame at the front of the car or onto the dashboard itself. I wouldn't recommend using the door because the door itself can move so it's not going to be very stable. So you pop your hands onto wherever you find most supportive and then keep facing forward and just sit straight back onto the seat, obviously minding your head as you go through the door frame. Once you're seated nice and comfortably, you then want to use your hand on the chair itself, again the door frame and then the dashboard so you've got a good grip and then you just want to use that just to lever yourself round and swing your feet into the footwell. So you don't want to be twisting your back too much. And then once you're there, you can get comfortable and get yourself seated comfortably. One of my patients did give me a great tip for this as well. So she found that what she would do is she would sit straight back down onto the seat. And then when she was there, she'd then use a plastic carrier bag, pop that underneath her. And then when she went to swizzle round, she could move much more easily. There was no grip with the seat. Obviously, once you're then sat there, you'd remove the carrier bag so that you're not going to be slipping or moving around while the car's moving. But it's just a good little tip, nothing expensive, something really easy to do that can make that transition a lot more comfortable. When you're then going to get out of the car, it's exactly the same, but in reverse. So with that, again, pop your hands somewhere where you've got good grip, and then you just want to swing your legs around. You may need to shift your hips a little bit. Once you're there, make sure your feet are nice and grounded and comfortable, you've got good balance. And then again, use your hands just to push up and out and then wait till you're nice and stable before then moving off. So that's my best tip for getting in and out of the car. Now, once you're in the car, there are, there's lots of different advice about the way you can set up your car. Um, so I'm gonna go through the basics just to make sure that you have all those things covered when you do um, get in the car next time. And so with this, particularly for the driver, the, the seated position is really important. Even if you're going for a short journey, you can change the way your car set up very slightly and actually make a big difference, particularly if you're getting a lot of stiffness in your neck or in your low back. So what you want to do is next time you're sat in the driver's seat, you want to make sure that you're sat nice and comfortably and really sit back into your seat and just see how it feels. Ideally, you want the seat to be fairly upright, not to the point where it's pushing you forward, but enough that you're nice and comfortable there. And then looking at the wheel in front of you, if you have a way to actually move the steering wheel itself, that could be really helpful. So you can um, adjust the height and the distance from you. But you also start with the foot pedals as well. So pop your feet onto the pedals 
And when you fully depress them, you want your foot to be able to go right the way down, but still have a little bit of a bend in your knees so that you've got a little bit of comfort there. You don't want your leg fully stretched out and you don't want to be really cramped up and have your knees really bent up and close to you. So move the seat forward and backwards and also move the back forward and backwards as well, just to test out where is most comfortable for you so you're able to reach the pedals nice and easily, um, but also not be cramped up. Once that's comfortable, I'll turn the side on so that you can imagine I'm facing my steering wheel. So with this, so I've got the backrest nice and comfortable, my legs are nice and relaxed. As I said, if you're able to move the steering wheel itself, that can be helpful. So you can make sure that you bring it close enough to you. So you've got a little bit of a bend in your elbows, your arms are nice and relaxed. You don't want it too close, obviously for safety, if there's an accident and the airbag goes off, you need at least 30 centimeters between your chest and the wheel but also you don't want it too far away where your elbows are locked out and it's going to be uncomfortable so you want just a nice little bend in the elbows so they're nice and relaxed. Next you're going to concentrate on the area behind your head and around your neck. So with the head restraint, um, that is the name for it rather than headrest, it is there to restrain you so if there was an accident your head wouldn't be pushed backwards. So you want the head restraint right back behind your head so just the top of the restraint is at the top of your head and then you want it in a comfortable position so that when you're sat there driving comfortably, you've got a little bit of contact with it there, so you know it's right there, there's no movement backwards, but also you don't want it so far forward that it's pushing your head forward and either pushing you down or just pushing you into that sort of position. So you just want it nice and comfortable, but in that safe height as well, so it's going to be doing the job. And then, of course, you want to look onto mirrors as well. So both with your rear view mirror and also your wing mirrors, as you're sat there ready to go just have a quick glance and just see you want to be able to just glance with your eyes up and make sure that everything is visible in the rear view mirror and same in the wing mirrors as well if you've been moving your seat position around then you may well find that you need to adjust the mirrors too that's particularly helpful if you do have any neck stiffness or neck problems it avoids you having to constantly sort of look up or twist to see all the mirrors try and just glance and see if you're able to see everything with those so they are the main things for setting up the position in your car. Um, and so then you're ready to go off and have your journey. The other thing you can think about is the actual type of car that you have. So if people are looking for a new car, the things that I go through with them, essentially the key is just to try out lots of different cars if you can. Uh, so the when you go around a showroom, look at lots of different types, lots of different heights of cars, look at the size of the door frame as well. And don't be afraid to try lots of them out as well. It's much better to get a good feel for the car. It's a big purchase as well, so make sure that you are comfortable with it. One really key thing to remember as well is if you're shopping around on a good day and you're feeling quite flexible and your pain levels aren't too high, you do need to be really conscious and think about what your bad day looks like and how it would be trying to get in and out of the car and move around the car as well on a bad day. So do try it out. Um, and do think about where your problem areas are. So for example, in your low back, if you get a lot of problems there, the key things are to be making sure that the car isn't too high or too low, so you're not having to really step up into it, but similarly when you're getting in and out, it's not gonna be too low and causing you to stoop too much. Similarly with your neck as well, you want to, if you have problems with turning the head too much, then make sure the car's not too big, so that actually when you're maneuvering, you're really having to crane your neck and look a lot. Um, so just think about, on your bad days, what are the things that would be difficult for you normally, and then make sure that the car is a good fit for you. And so, as I mentioned, in terms of manoeuvres, when you are going for a test drive, not only try out actually setting up the car as I just went through, so you're looking at the seat position and the mirrors and everything, do try some manoeuvres, so uh, reversing, particularly reversing around corners and parallel parking, and just make sure that the car is a good fit for you, so that in terms of the size of the vehicle, the handling of it as well, um, and the way the mirrors are positioned and everything, make sure that it is going to be suitable for you, particularly if you find turning in the seat difficult, make sure that those kinds of manoeuvres aren't going to be too tricky. Then you also want to look um, in terms of if the car has anything like power steering, um, or any kind of uh, features like hill start assist um, and things like that, because that can be really helpful. And some people do find if they get a lot of low back pain or hip pain, the automatic cars can be really helpful too. And similarly, shoulder pain is really helped by automatic cars because of having to change gear a lot less. 
So do look into lots of different things and just explore what would suit you. Um, and if you have friends with vehicles as well, then obviously it, with different ones that you're looking at buying, then do ask them um, and see if you know there are any particular features they find helpful. So I'm just going to scroll down, just make sure that we've got a few comments coming in. Just make sure I'm not missing anything. OK, perfect. Uh, right. So once you are in the car and you're as comfortable as you can be in terms of setting up the seat position, you can also use cushions to help with that. Really importantly, anytime you're making changes like this, do make sure that you check with your doctor as to whether you need to inform the DVLA. We do have more information on the website about that and I've linked to that in the video description as well. But there's some really simple things you can do. Um, as a driver, you can use lower back cushions that actually strap around the chair so they're nice and secure there. As a passenger, you can do the same, but you can also use neck cushions, so like the travel cushions, just to give you a bit, a bit more support and cushioning around the neck as well. So it's well worth looking at different things like that and how they can help. Now, some people do find heat and ice really helpful for pain. With heat, it's actually really handy. You can get not only built-in he uh, heated car seats, but you can also get ones that you can plug in really reasonably on Amazon or anywhere online, really. But they'll plug into your car and they can either be the full length of your back or just the low back. And that can be helpful just to provide a little bit of warmth and comfort. And also because they're on low settings and you're easy to switch them on and off, they're going to be safe while you're in a car. Obviously, I wouldn't be recommending using ice packs or hot water bottles or anything like that while driving because it's not going to be safe. But also, it's really easy to forget and leave them on for too long and then you're at risk of burning as well. So obviously, we want to be very cautious of that. If you do find, though, that ice is much more helpful for you and you want to be able to use that to make driving more comfortable, I would recommend using ice just before you set off for a journey. So pop either an ice pack or bag of frozen peas wrapped in a tea towel and pop it on the area for around 10 minutes before you're going away. You can also use the single use ice packs or even if you're going on a longer journey and you want to be able to ice during rest breaks, pack a cool bag with some ice blocks um, or if you're taking food with you as well, use the ice blocks actually to, to keep the food nice and cool and then use those on rest breaks as well. Now, in terms of uh, taking breaks, I definitely recommend every 30 to 60 minutes having a break. So if you're on a long journey, do look at the route ahead and plan out your rest stops. It's so easy just to want to carry on and get to your destination as soon as you can. And it can feel comfortable at the time. And then you find that getting out of the car after a long period, you can then feel really stiff and painful and you can really feel the after effects for quite a few days. So it's much better to plan those rest breaks in, get up, have a walk around and get moving. And then things will feel a lot more comfortable when you do reach your destination. It's also really important in terms of concentration, particularly if, if you're the driver, having those breaks just to rest your eyes, rest your brain a little bit. That can be really helpful. So as a passenger, you do have some options in terms of doing some exercises and some movement during a journey so that in those stages between rest breaks, you're actually able to keep things moving and more comfortable. Then you can also use these on rest breaks, both the passenger and the driver can do these. Um, and I recommend the driver doing it in um, a passenger seat so that the footwell is nice and free and you've got some space around you. So I'll go through a few of these exercises now. It's formed into a nice little routine that you can do while seated and I'm putting it together into a plan that will be available to download on the website as well afterwards. So do keep an eye out next week for when we upload that. But I'll move back a little bit so you can see me a little bit better. And I'll go through the really simple seated routine for passengers or for drivers on the rest breaks. So we're going to start from the neck and work our way down and loosen up the entire body. If you want to follow this live, feel, feel free to. Obviously, if you have any issues in, in a, any areas, it can be helpful to check with your physio or with your doctor before trying them. But if you do want to try them out, just take it nice and slowly and just make sure things feel comfortable. So we're going to start with the neck and we're just going to gently turn the head either side just to look over our shoulder nice and slowly and rhythmically just to move the neck joints a little bit and loosen up through there. So you can do them as many times as it feels it needs it and then come back to the centre. And then we're going to tilt the head over to each side. And again, nice, slow, rhythmic movements and just go as far as is comfortable. Particularly with this movement, it's common to feel or hear a few pops and clicks. As long as that's all pain free, that's absolutely fine. 
and then last one and then come back up and then just stroke your shoulders up towards your ears and relax back down just a few times just to relax the muscles around your shoulder that run up um, up into your neck and then you can do some nice shoulder rolls backwards first of all and again you can usually feel or hear a few pops and clicks quite often if you've got tight muscles around here you can feel them crunching away as you loosen them up that's absolutely fine as long as it's pain free now even when you are wearing a seat belt um, obviously keep the seat belt done up you normally have a little bit of room for maneuver so with this we can twist the body slightly so that you're twisting your shoulders round so you can use your hand on the opposite knee if you want to just create a little bit of leverage just want to look with your neck first and then twist your shoulders around then come back to the center and again just swap the hands over just as far as is comfortable and this should help loosen up your spine all the way from the base of your neck all the way down to the base of your spine we'll just do a couple more and then last one here now next you can just get a little bit of side bending movement going through your lower back keep your feet nicely planted on the floor and then you can relax your arms to the side and you can just gently shift your weight so that you lift one hip up so you're shifting to the left and lifting your right hip shift to the right and lift your left so you're getting a nice tilt going through your pelvis there and that's going to get your low back moving get your hips moving a little bit and also using the muscles in the legs is good for your circulation as well good and then the next movements we want to get going through the lower back are essentially bending forward and also arching backwards so I'll show you from the side for these so with this we want to get a nice bit of a curve going through the lower back so you want to um, you can always place your hand in there just to feel what's going on with the movement and you essentially just arch your back slightly and then sink back into the seat so you arch and sink back so again you should be able to do this with your seat belt done up and you can just get a nice rocking movement there and then once that's feeling comfortable and loose, loosened up you can move on to the hips so you can just gently straighten your right leg out in front of you as you bend your left knee and then you do the opposite movement bending the right knee as you straighten the left so like a pushing and pulling movement like so just through the legs so you're gonna get the knees moving get the hips moving a little bit and the ankles as well just loosen everything up and then you can get the hips moving a little bit as well so you can pop your feet together and then just relax your knees out to the side and then you can pop your feet hip width apart and relax your knees in you can also do that in a uh, windscreen wiper movement so feet together you can just rock the knees side to side together and that's going to be getting some rotation going through your hips and just loosen up through there so particularly helpful if you get a lot of hip pain while sitting and then finally you can't see my feet but we're going to do some ankle pumping movements so you're just pointing your toes to the ceiling and then to the floor and alternating between each side as i said this will get the calf muscles moving calf muscles pumping and that's great for circulation as well as loosening the ankle joints themselves so that's the whole seated routine as I said, you can do that as a passenger while you're driving, or both passenger and driver can do that at rest breaks when you stop. Next is a standing routine. So if you'd like to stand and try this out, please feel free to. I will pop this out of the way slightly. So with this movement, it's particularly good if you're stopping at a rest stop somewhere, or you can do it when you arrive to, um, at your destination. So firstly with this, you just want to reach your arms up towards the ceiling, and stretch your back nice and tall as far as is comfortable and then come back down again we want to loosen the shoulders off so doing some nice shoulder roll movements and again you might feel and hear a few pops and clicks with that and that's absolutely fine and some nice shoulder shrugs as well Good. and then the next we're going to reach down towards the floor so obviously take care if this is a difficult movement for you you can do it nice and gently just by tilting the head and then just by slumping the back and if you want to make it a little bit stronger you can follow the movement all the way down as if you're going to touch your toes but there's no problem if you can't get near there 
And if you get a few hip clicks, that's absolutely fine. As you hang here, you can just swing over to the right side and over to the left. In nice bouncing movements, just to encourage the movement. Or you can simply just fold your arms and stay here for as long as comfortable. Then you can use your hands on your thighs just to help you roll back up and make sure that's comfortable. And then to do the opposite movement, we can pop our hands onto our low back to provide a little bit of support. And then lifting from our chest bone up towards the ceiling, we can just gently arch the back backwards and come back to the center. We can do that a couple of times. Again, you're really lifting from your chest rather than just arching backwards and you're protecting your low back with your hands there. Next, to loosen up into your hips, you can pop your hands on your hips and just slide, slide your hips side to side to loosen up through there and that will work up into the lower back that we just stretched as well. And then holding on to something for support, so you can hold on to the roof of the car, I'll use the wall here. You can just gently swing the leg forward and backwards, making sure there's nothing behind you that you're about to kick because that's not gonna help you <laughs> in terms of your pain. And then you can repeat on the other side, so I'll just turn around. And then to stretch through the front of your hips, so that's particularly good if you have been sat in the car for a long while. This, the leg that you're going to stretch is going to be the one that you take behind you. So for stretching the left leg first, again, use the wall or the top of the car for support. Take your left leg, nice big step behind you. Keep your body nice and upright so you're not leaning forward or backwards. And then you just want to gently bend that right knee so that your knee is level on top of your ankle. And they should feel a bit of a stretch through the front of the left hip, probably through the left calf as well if you've got tight calves like me. And sometimes you'll feel a little bit of a stretch in the right calf too. And you just want to relax there for a few seconds as that stretches out. And then come back up. And then to repeat the stretch on the right, take the right leg, nice big step behind you. And then again, keep the body nice and upright, bend the left leg, the left knee, sorry, so your knee is over your ankle. And then again, you should feel the stretch through the front of the right hip, through the right calf, and maybe through the left calf as well. To make this exercise a little bit easier, you can just bring the foot a little bit closer so you're not going as far. To make it more difficult and a stronger stretch, take the leg even further back. And that can be quite a strong stretch there. And then finally, to stretch into your hamstring muscles, but run down the back of the leg. Again, if you've been driving for a while, particularly with the knees quite bent, these hamstring muscles can get tight and that can then pull up into your back as well. So you want to use something, either the, the actual seat in the car, or you can use just the edge of the car door, the door frame. But essentially, you want to use something to hold onto for balance and pop the heel of your foot onto something like so. Sometimes that's enough to get a bit of a stretch down the back of the thigh in which case you can hold it there. If you want to make it a bit stronger, um, as long as you don't have any nerve problems in the leg, you can just bring your toes up towards you and you should then feel a bit of a stronger stretch through there. Similarly, to make that a little bit easier, use something lower for your foot and to make it a little bit stronger, you can use something higher as well. So I'll repeat on the other side. So again, you just pop your foot onto something. Either relax with that stretch there, or if you want to make it a little bit stronger through the back of the thigh, bring your toes up towards you and you'll usually find that one side feels tighter than the other, in which case you probably want to work on the tighter side a little bit more, hold the stretch for maybe a little bit longer as well. And then relax. So that is the standing routine, and that as well I'll put into a written routine, which you can download from the website next week, um, which means that then when you are going on a journey, just print out those routines and have them ready so that on your rest breaks, you can go through that, just loosen everything up, Hopefully you are feeling a lot looser after trying those out live. Do let me know in the comments how they feel. As I said, if you're new to exercising or if you have any problems in any particular areas, check with your doctor or physio before trying those out just to make sure that they are okay for you. Um, but hopefully they're gentle, gentle enough that it should be suitable for most people. And then finally, in terms of my driving video, the last thing that I wanted to go through uh, was obviously being aware that sometimes there are things in terms of back to SBA and the treatment of the condition that we would then recommend avoiding driving for periods of time. So if you're experiencing a flare up, which means that your mobility is really affected, particularly if you're unable to move your neck enough to check things like your blind spot, um, or if you're unable to move your back, 
to, to check areas as well. We would say avoiding driving during that time is sensible. Also, if you're finding that you're, you've got a lot of fatigue as well, um, then obviously we'd avoid driving then. And be aware of medications that can cause drowsiness or difficulty concentrating as well. And so if you find that you're getting these episodes of uh, lots of flares, um, or if you're finding driving difficult in general, then do speak to your doctor and discuss driving with them because there may well be lots of things that they can do to help support you and keep you driving safely and comfortably for a long time. Similarly, in terms of medication, if you're finding that it's affecting your, um, if it's making you drowsy or affecting your concentration, then do speak to your doctor about that or your pharmacist because there may well be other medications that they can give you that will be helpful without actually affecting your concentration or anything. So do have this discussion with your healthcare team to make sure that you are really treating your actual SPA well, but it's not affecting things that you want to do like driving. There are also lots of things you can do to actually adapt the car to make it a lot easier. And the link in the video description to the Motability Scheme um, and also the DVLA website has some information in terms of things you can do to keep driving. There's also a charity called Driving Mobility, which the DVLA can refer, <coughs> excuse you, excuse me, they can refer you to them or you can self-refer. But Driving Mobility um, can actually provide lots of accommodations and changes to your car so that you're able to keep driving comfortably and safely for a long time. Um, so definitely do speak to them. Um, and follow the link in the video description as well. Um, and we've also got some information on the blue badge scheme there too. So I hope that's been helpful for everyone. Please do pop any of your questions in the comment box. And as I said, the video will stay on the page. So if you've only just come part way through, then you can watch the whole thing back. And we'll also pop a copy of the video on our YouTube and website. And then we'll also add in the follow up blog post with all the information I've discussed and also those exercise sheets that you'll be able to print out as well. So I'll come a little bit closer and just check the comments now. So please do add any more and I will go through them. Okay, excellent. Hi, Angela. Thank you for joining. So Angela says, um, I purchased an ele electric throw with car adapter that I can fold and put at my back. My car seat heaters are too weak. That's a really good idea, actually, using a heated blanket, which then I imagine if you're folding it, it's going to be a bit warmer than a car seat heater. Um, so that's a really good idea. And then if you're a passenger, you can just have it over you and keep it nice and comfy and toasty as well. Um, OK, so Gordon, thank you for sharing your experiences. So Gordon says, I decided to voluntarily surrender my driving license two years ago because my AS has left me with fusion in my neck and spine and my posture has pushed me forward, making it unsafe to see at junctions or reversing. I have now become only the passenger or backseat driver. <laughs> I think I made the correct decision in no longer driving. Absolutely, thank you for sharing your experiences. So it is well worth having a discussion with your doctor if you are finding things difficult um, and then definitely making a decision um, to become the passenger or the backseat driver um, if you do need to, but absolutely have, have that chat with your healthcare team, see if they can support you in any way. Um, but if not, it, it can be a very difficult decision to make, but for some people it is the right one. So thank you for sharing that, Gordon. Uh, so Lou asks if um, her husband would qualify for a blue badge. Um, so do get in contact with my colleague Gary. Um, Gary at nas.co.uk is his email address. I've just seen Sally's pop that in the comments. Thank you. Um, but he is the expert on all thing, all things blue badge, uh, any kind of um, PIP payments, anything like that. He is the man to ask. Hi, John and Angela. Thanks for joining. Uh, right. So Miriam asks, I've had severe cramps in my hips and legs whilst driving and when it's not safe to stop. Any advice on what I can do to alleviate the pain? I drive automatic and it always happens in my right leg. Um, so absolutely, I'll definitely speak to your doctor about this and just ask if there's anything that they've seen on the scan in the back that can cause leg cramps. Because sometimes nerve problems in the back can actually cause those kinds of symptoms, particularly if it's just happening on the one side. Um, as you've mentioned that you drive an automatic, it might just be because obviously you're using that right leg a lot more that it's causing it. So certainly one thing you can do is to have really regular breaks. Um, do feel free to get in contact with me directly because we can have a chat because if it's happening after just a short amount of time, um, there might be other things that we need to look at in terms of helping. 
Um, but in terms of helping leg cramps, absolutely making sure that you're well hydrated can be really helpful. Massaging the area regularly can be really good. So before you go for a drive, massaging the muscles along the front and back of the thigh and into the calf as well. And you can even use things like a, a foam roller or a spiky massage ball to help massage into the muscles. It may be that loosening things off before you drive will actually help. Um, but certainly do get in touch with me, zoe at nas.co.uk. Um, if you'd like to chat a little bit more, we can chat on the phone if that's easier. Um, and we do also have a previous video all about massage and AS. So if you scroll back through our videos on our page, you should be able to find that one as well. Uh, Katie asks, should knees ideally be in line with hips, the seat of the chair? Our seat means that my knees are normally higher than my hips. Is this a problem? Um, so firstly, if if it's comfortable, then that is absolutely fine to have your, your knees and your hips at um, any, any angle, as long as it's comfortable, really. Generally, I would say try and have your hips a little bit higher than your knees. So I'll, I'll come back a little bit to show you what I mean. So as I mentioned earlier, in terms of when you've been driving for a little while, sometimes the front of the hip can get tight and then you want to do the lunge stretch to counter that out. We do find that sometimes when you're sitting, if your knees are higher than your hips and you've got a closer angle here, that does tend to tense these muscles up a little bit more if you're going for longer journeys. So if you can adjust the seat, sometimes seats have different things that you can turn that actually sort of pump the seat up and push you up a little bit, which would then bring your knees down. If you don't have that option, then you can always look at using a cushion underneath, obviously well supported, but a cushion just to lift your hips up a little bit, so that then your knees are lower. Certainly some cars that I've been a passenger in have had those kind of scoop seats, um, I think they're sports racing seats and I don't know cars very well, um, racing seats, which because they're scooped, they do tend to kind of sink you back, in which case probably using cushions, um, obviously well secured into the seats, so they don't move around. That may well be the best bet. But certainly if it's comfortable, it's absolutely fine. But if you're getting a lot of hip pain and tightness, then that could well be contributing to it. Okay, Stuart uh, has commented saying, great video, I'm a truck driver and you've demonstrated a few good exercises which aren't done in our Plymouth NAS, NAS group, thank you. Oh, you're welcome Stuart, thank you for joining. Um, yes, truck driver, I imagine you do get some symptoms of stiff back and hips and things, so hopefully those um, exercises will be helpful. And just keep an eye out on our website next week and we'll publish um, the list of exercises, full instructions with sort of, um, suggestions on how frequently to do them and so on. Um, and then you can print them out and have them when, when you're on the road as well. Right, so I think I've come to the end of the questions. Please do pop any other questions in there before we finish up. But as I said, do feel free to contact me. I'm available on the helpline a few days a week. And also you can email me anytime, zoe at nas.co.uk um, and we can have a chat about any particular help I can offer. But I don't think we have any more questions. In which case I'll leave it there for today but I will say please do join us next week um, we're going to be here on Tuesday instead of Wednesdays so it's going to be Tuesday the 29th next week at 5 30 p.m we're having a yoga session with Jamie Boder and Jeff Lindsay which I'm really excited about um, so they run the group yoga for AS and they're going to be running a live session which you can join in with and it's um, really great because they put together routines that are suitable right from beginner and really severe AS right up to more advanced yoga um, where your AS doesn't affect your yoga practice very much at all. So it's really accessible. They go through loads of adaptations. So if you have never done yoga before, there's definitely going to be something that you can try out and enjoy. And if you're a well-practiced yogi, you may well find that they have a few adaptations that you've not come across before. So do join us for that 5.30 next Tuesday. But thank you for everyone, everyone for joining today and hopefully we'll see you next week. Take care and keep well.